The Vice President, Professor Yemi Oshibajo, says that Nigeria's history will not determine the future of the country. He was speaking while opening the photo exhibition to mark the 2018 Independence Day celebration in Abuja. Professor Oshibajo noted the different phrases in the country's development, which he observed were trying times for the nation. He explained that the importance of his uh, historical excursion, the Vice President equally pointed out that each phase of the nation's history attested the unity and integrity of the people of Nigeria. The photo exhibition seeks to showcase Nigeria's history from the colonial era to the nation's independence in 1960 and the various governance structure till date. We are reminded of the twists and turns of our history. The colonial phase, independence, the first republic, the political crisis, the coups and counter coups, the civil war, the short restoration of civil rule and another military incursion, and then civil rule since 1999. Each phase has tested our resolve to remain united, to maintain the integrity of the country, this country, this our great country. Each phase has tested the commitment of our leaders to what we describe as the Nigerian project. It has tested their ingenuity, their wisdom, in navigating the frequently tortuous and turbulent waters of our national story. History could be a crutch on which we lean. It could be an excuse for not doing as well as we could. Or it could be a strong shoulder to stand on. It could be a tyrant reminding us of how we got it wrong. Or it could be a reminder that our future is greater than our history. I'm pleased to say on behalf of the Nigerian government and the Nigerian people that we have chosen to say that our history will not determine our future. Our history is the least that we can ever be. Our future is much greater. Our history is only the precursor to a greater Nigeria, to a Nigeria that's prosperous, united, and where, where all of us are treated fairly and justly. Nigeria's Vice President, Professor Yemi Oshibajo. Let's quickly switch over to our Abuja studios now with Malkbe Ogun Yusuf for more reports. Hello, Gimba. The Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Tuko Burutai, has warned commanders of various operations across the country to be nonpartisan and resist advances from politicians who may want to engage them for selfish gains. General Burutai handed down the warning at a conference in Abuja to appraise the activities of the army in the various ongoing operations across the country. According to the army chief, officers who are found wanting will be court-martialed and dealt with accordingly. And ahead of the 2019 general elections, the National Peace Committee, that's the NPC, led by former head of state Abdusalami Abubakar, has met with the chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu. According to General Abubakar, the meeting is necessary to prevent the overheating of the polity. He further sued for peace in the country while urging politicians and the security agencies to play by the rules of the game. The committee also met behind closed doors with some leaders of political parties, religious leaders, elder statesmen and heads of some agencies. We have interacted with the INEC chairman and his uh, staff and also we have security agencies here who have got one role or the other in performing of this election. So all in all, we have had a briefing, and then later this afternoon, we are going to meet the political parties. Uh, the chairman in ECA has told us there are 91 registered political parties. In furtherance of ensuring that the peace continue, we are going to listen to them, and hear their complaints and also appeal to uh, them to make sure that this uh, politics is played without bitterness. As you are very much aware, if there is no peace in any country, there will be no country at all. So this is the essence of this meeting, to ensure that we are all on the same, same wavelength, to ensure there is peace in our uh, 
Former head of state, General Abdusalami Abubakar. And more reactions are trailing last Saturday's governorship poll in Oshun State. But this time it's coming from the missions of the European Union, the United Kingdom and the United States. They're asking Nigerians to continue to support the peaceful, free, fair and credible completion of the election process as INA conducts reruns in seven polling units. In a joint statement, the EU, the US and the United Kingdom commend the people of Oshun for voting peacefully and the Independent National Electoral Commission for the improved organization of the election and the security agencies for their conduct. The statement says the rerun should take place without any violence, intimidation or vote buying so that those who could not vote would not be disenfranchised. It adds that whoever wins the rerun should be magnanimous in victory and whoever loses should be gracious in defeat. And that's all from Abuja. It's back to you, Gimba. Brilliant. Many thanks indeed, Mogbe. A former Minister of State for the Federal Capital Territory, John Akman Ododehe, has officially declared his intention to contest the 2019 governorship elections in Akwa Ibom State. Senator Ododehe, who is contesting under the platform of the All Progressive Congress, the APC, made the declaration at the mega rally in Uyo, the Akwa Ibom State capital. The event also served as a solidarity rally to drum up support for President Muhammad Buhari's second term bid. Supporters and friends of Senator John James Akwa Odo Dehe are here in their thousands at the Uyo Township Stadium to register their support and solidarity for a man they refer to as the People's General. of the occasion, architect Ekong Etuk describes Senator Udo Dehe as a man of character, conscience and integrity. Awake! Elect leaders of conscience, leaders with a good track record, and leaders with good character, because enough is enough. We have a good Various speakers are unanimous on the suitability of the former senator to vie for the office of the governor. The man who has what honor wants is the reason why honor is here. We want to have a plain field for everybody to buy. And we want the best candidate to be made. And now to the climax of the event. By this declaration, the race to the Akwaibom State Government House in 2019 is looking interesting. However, the final decision remains for the people. With toxicological challenges causing health and economic problems in the country, it is important to have a robust discussion on how to tackle these problems in the long and short term. It is in this view that the Nigerian Society of Toxicology Sciences, in partnership with the Standards Organization of Nigeria, is holding its first scientific conference towards addressing the challenge. For the organizers, the conference is not just significant, but comes at a time Nigeria is in serious need of solutions to daily exposure to toxicants. Our correspondent, Kayla Megwa, reports. Between March and June of 2010, 163 people died of lead poisoning in Zafara State because of illegal gold mining practices in the state. In 2016, Niger State was also at the risk of metal contamination because of poor gold mining processes. 
it is to find a lasting solution to these problems and more that the Nigerian Society for Toxicological Sciences is holding its first ever scientific conference and its theme encompasses all areas in toxicology. The majority of the grains and peanuts that were harvested in Nigeria were found to be um, found to be of much less quality than the relevant international standard uh, required for that particular product. And you may ask why? Because of aflatoxins. Another cause of toxins in our atmosphere is cigarette smoke, especially in Nigeria. Philip Morris International, one of the world's largest cigarette makers, have come up with what they call reduced risk products to handle the poisoning from smoking. Our vision of even phasing out from cigarettes started from about 2007. And up to now, we had that vision that, you know, cigarettes are very harmful and we need eventually to transition into products that are less harmful to smokers who cannot quit. The Nigerian Society for Toxicological Sciences has also created an Android app called Report Talks to ensure citizen engagement in the war on toxins. In particular, we are paying attention to reduce risk products and trying to you know, persuade ourselves to come to terms, to come to understanding with the reduced risk products, to find out whether they actually re risk reduced with their use or not. The Nigerian Society for Toxicological Sciences is hoping that the communique from this conference isn't just read, but acted upon. Let's shift our gears one more time now, shall we, to business news with Kayode Okikiolu. Thank you, Gimba. You're welcome to business news. The Bureau of Public Enterprises says the government will offer 10 state-owned companies for sale to selected investors and the public in the fourth quarter to raise 289 billion naira towards funding the 2018 budget. At an event in Abeokuta, the Ogun State Capital, a director with the BPE, Mr. Joe Anichebe, explains that preparations are in the final stages to begin the sale of companies ranging from power, aviation to insurance. Mr. Anichebe explains that Nikon Insurance and Skyway Aviation Handling Company will be sold this month or in October through an initial public offering. The Senior Special Assistant to the President on Economic Matters, Adeyemi Dipeolu, has been speaking on the efforts of the federal government in improving the agricultural sector. Speaking at the 59th meeting of the Nigeria Economic Summit, or rather, Society in Abuja, he listed long-term financing of the agricultural sector and a single-digit interest rate to farmers as some of the measures taken to improve the contribution to the agricultural sector to the nation's economy. Let's head over to the Nigerian Stock Exchange as the NSC All Share Index and market cap record massive rebound on the back of strong gains by listed bellwether equities. For details of today's trading activities, let's join Tosi Additional. Hello and welcome to the Stock Market Report. The domestic equities market jumped by more than 2% at the close of Tuesday's trading session as investors shared the Central Bank's Monetary Policy Committee's decision to retain policy rates. The strong recovery was contributed by four out of the five major sectors of the NSE, but largely driven by a 3.24% rally from the consumer goods sector. Positive sentiments dominated the price charts with 26 gainers led by a 10% increase from Law Union against 20 losers led by an 8.77% drop from livestock feeds. Overall shares traded for the day stands at 222.95 million units worth 3.28 billion naira with the shares of Zenith Bank, International Breweries and UBA as the top most patronized by investors. That's the stock market report. I'm Tosin. Additional.
Thank you, Tosi. Now, major stock markets across the world finished Tuesday's session in mixed performance, with exception of European stock markets following a combination of political uncertainty in the United States, as well as higher oil prices. Here are some of the figures. And that's business news for tonight. Thank you for watching. I am Kayode Okikyolu.